Hello, my name is Chanel Rose, and I am the owner and chief creator here at Ticket to Freedom. I would like to thank you guys for joining me this Tuesday evening in December. It is so great having you guys here. Um, I wanted to let you know that this week we'll be focusing on how to overcome obstacles in your small business because here's the thing. We can have all the cute conversations about um, how to generate revenue and all the different ways that you can do sales and that kind of thing. And the truth of the matter is that like we will do that. But as we are ending the year, starting the new year, so many of you guys are new entrepreneurs. You get discouraged and frustrated. Hey, I've been there. I have had many a nights full of challenges. And honestly, I just want to take some time and help you um, begin to anticipate what you should be planning for. And any ways that I can help you, always shoot me a DM. I come up with these content, excuse me, I come up with this content based on the needs that I had when I was starting my business. But I would love to share with you anything um, that you see fit. So if there's just like something nagging at you, holla at me, I wanna help, you know? Like, that's what I'm here for. It's important for me to share knowledge, but I wanna always make sure that I'm meeting your needs because you are who matters most to me. As I said, I have a mission of 1,000 business owners, okay? and it's new business owners. So that means that 1,000 of you out there in the universe, I would love to help you. So please, um, let me know. I want to help, okay? And unlike other days where I just dig right on in, I want to give you guys an update about what's happening in the business because I haven't done that maybe ever <laughs> on these lives, okay? So let's get to it. Officially, we are having our very first Ticket to Freedom um, Business Builder Workshop. And because I understand it's the holidays and some people have had to go super lean, I am making it accessible for everyone. So what that means is for a limited time, the class is only $25. Guys, you couldn't even get a half an hour or 15 minutes of my knowledge for $25. So please, please, Come on in and tell a friend, we are going to build a business from scratch in an hour and a half. An hour and a half. An hour and a half, okay? We are literally about to build a business from scratch. And if you are new and you haven't registered your business yet, if you aren't sure how to tell your brand story, if you are unsure about how to articulate your value, what should you say, what shouldn't you say, listen, we're gonna dig deep and let me know what else you wanna talk about because I have a list, child. And you know I come on here every day for half an hour because you have liked, commented, and subscribed over time. If you haven't, please do today. Um, we're gonna dig right in. So as I'm navigating through this, if it triggers something, please send me a message and also sign up because $25, I'm basically giving it away at this point. I just really want to see you guys win and every person counts and you get me to my goal of 1,000 business owners and 1,000 new businesses. So please take the time and register. I would love to see you guys there. Okay, let's get into it. I took a deep breath. So we're going to go over five challenges that business owners face and businesses face um, especially in their first two years. It happened throughout the life cycle of the business, but you and I are new entrepreneurs, right? We're in this together. So that's where my focus will always be is on new and aspiring business owners. And even if you have owned a business in the past, excuse me, in the past, it didn't work out. You're trying it again. I'm proud of you. Uh, it's, it, it's a great opportunity for you to learn um, from me and I would love to learn from you. So number one, client dependence. A lot of people get into business, especially um, specialized niche, so like transportation or coaches. They get one client, hey Patty, how you doing? Um, they get into their niche and they find one big client and they build the growth, the scaling, the development, the hiring, everything on one single client. That's not a good idea, okay? You don't want, you know, 50, 60, 70% of your income to rest on the viability of one client, right? That's so much pressure. And think about it. If you were just like a one or two client shop, 
and 2020 happened and your one or two clients had to shift gears, where would you be? In a tight spot, right? So it is good to have a big client like an Amazon, a Walmart, or a Northwestern Hospital, or John Hopkins University, or Google, whoever, right? That's great. But um, you should always be looking to, you know, if it's Google, then does Facebook fit your model? Does Twitter fit your model? Clubhouse? Um, any other other big technologies? Um, find multiple shops in your niche so that maybe you aren't making as much. But let me tell you, if you lose your one big client and they only make up 10% of your revenue, then you can just adjust. But if you lose your one big client, excuse me, one big client, and they're... 80% of your revenue. Woo, honey. How are you going to lose 80% of your income? I don't know anybody who can survive off of that. So, please, um, don't rely solely on client interaction. And we discussed this before. You need some passive ways to generate income. And that would include things like an ebook, um, one off workshops. Hello, live events, right? You should always be finding ways to stretch your expertise and lend your value where you can. You cannot be a one model product shop. I mean, I guess you could, but that puts you so niche in a market that if it becomes volatile or it changes, you don't really have a way to make adjustments. You just have to either go lean or experience a work stoppage until you to excuse me until you can rebuild again. So to prevent that from happening, just expand a little bit. You know, figure out what kind of passive income streams can I create based on my expertise. Ebooks are usually really easy, low hanging fruit that you can develop and sell over and over and over again. It could be how to build a website or how to coach yourself, right? Maybe you can't afford one-on-one -on -one coaching, but you need some assistance. So you create an ebook or a workbook. Hello, we love us a good workbook um, on how to coach yourself. You have so many options. Um, if you are coming up blank, DM me. We can come up with at least 10 things that you could sell. Uh, T-shirts, people love swag. It's a great way to passively market by putting your brand on coffee cups, on sweatshirts, um, what are those hats called? The skull caps, baseball caps, ink pens. Ooh, child, I can't tell you how many businesses I never heard of until I got an ink pen from them, okay? Um, what else? Post-it notes. You get the picture. I don't have to keep telling you about different types of swag. But they're passive. And maybe if you have high-ticket um, clients, what you can do is you can send them swag. So then they tell they, their friends, they become a part of a community instead of just a client. You see that? It creates client longevity and client loyalty because they are now members of a community instead of just your client. So that's number one. Don't let yourself get dependent on one client. Number two, money management. There are so many people who, just like that, all of a sudden, they go from making $1,000 to $10,000 to $15,000 to $20,000, right? Hey, say hello. Let me know who you are. Thanks for joining me. Um, in order to run a business successfully, you have to manage your money. That includes, you know, doing your books, checks and balances, understanding which of your um, streams of revenue are doing really well, and maybe what needs a, a 2.0 or what you should just consider letting go because it no longer serves your client base. I talk to you guys a lot about market research and once you have your clients, how to reinvest in your clients. Um, surveying them is an excellent way to do that. So you should definitely look into how you're managing your money because it'll tell you a lot about the health and strength of the business, right? Um, and things that people tend to lean on that get them in trouble is they assume that they don't need cash reserves. Having a lack of cash reserves is literally asking for your business to fall over because all you would need is one late payment from one client that you rely heavily on because y'all are hand to hand. Usually people who manage the money poorly are the same ones who have one or two clients that they depend too heavily on. Okay. Um, one late client payment or one abrupt ending of a contract, 
You don't have any cash reserves because you're used to getting that fat check every month. Don't let that be you. Please create a business savings. Please consider investing um, your business assets so that you can continue to build wealth inside the business because just like you need to have wealth generating um, products in your personal portfolio, so should the business. I mean, you start off with a savings account and you continue to build out past that savings account, but there needs to be cash reserves, okay? Um, you don't reassess. We talked about that. You don't go look at your books to see what's working well. You don't reach out for feedback. You don't follow up. And so you never um, realign. You create your mission one time. You go, you create your business plan once. You never look back at it. Why not? How do you know if this is even what you wanted to do if you just go out and blindly make decisions? Holla at the business plan. It is there for a reason. And make sure that what you're doing makes sense. And if you do decide to add things, go ahead and add it to your business plan. Continue to treat your business plan as a live document. Every time I come out with a new product, I go back into my business plan and whatever I'm building, I build it based on what's already there. It's like building a dorm room in your house, right? Sometimes you need to build a back house or a guest house, right? But sometimes you see a dormer. You wouldn't know because you don't take the time to figure out if what you're doing is even in line with what you said you set out to do. If you're having issues with attracting clients, a lot of times it's because what you say you do and what you want to do and what you are doing are all different, okay? Um, another thing that you do that can get you in trouble is founder emotions. I told y'all, I would get mad when people would not accept my contract and I would block them on social media. That doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? I don't know. I mean, because I was running my business like it was me instead of running my business like it was an entity that needed to go on past rejection. As a person, rejection can be very difficult. As a business, you serve a niche, right? And so you should expect rejection. People will reject you and you will reject people. We talked about a vetting process. It's a cycle. And a lot of times we always allow ourselves to be on the receiving end. We don't allow ourselves to be on the giving end, but you do potential clients a disservice by not saying no because they aren't the right fit. It is literally all connected with money management. But if you are not reassessing, you have no idea if what you're doing is actually correct for the business. You can't manage your money well if you're not even sure if what you're doing is in line with how you set out to make money in the first place, okay? Number three, fatigue. Oh yeah, I know all about that. Um, I am really good at staying up until two or three o'clock in the morning, uh, working on carousels or a deck or I come up with an idea about something I want to talk to you guys about. So I stay up a little bit late researching, getting facts. I love me a good Snapple fact, okay? Um, and I get lost in the sauce sometimes. My fatigue negatively impacts my business because when I don't get sleep, I just don't perform as well, right? And more than that, okay, product fatigue. You have exhausted all of the resources for a product and it is starting to cost you more than it's making. Or, you know, it's just, it's reached its prime. I think I posted last night or the night before about how Bill Gates, his first business, it did okay with the market for what he was doing. It just disappeared. It happens, right? Like, as technology improves, as people evolve, as your niche ages, sometimes what you're offering them has reached a fatigue point and you just need to put it to rest, okay? And as yourself, as a person, as the owner of the entity, your fatigue will negatively impact your business. You cannot be your best to your business if you are not the best to yourself. So please, I know it's hard, but you got to get some rest, okay? I know as a solopreneur, we think that rest is a work stoppage, but it's not. It's how you go hard and stay hard. So again, get some rest, okay? And um, I talked to you a little bit about how the, your emotions can negatively impact how you manage money because you think that things are supposed to be happening differently, but they don't, right? Well, then you start to make rash decisions because you are experiencing fatigue because you do not rest, you do not extend yourself grace, and you don't chill, okay? Chill! You are not the employee of a large corporation. You're the boss. Leave early, okay? Take a long lunch. You're entitled. The business will be there. You are excellent. You do not lose value when you rest. You actually double up. 
because you are prepared for anything. Your fatigue will negatively impact your business. Your fatigue can become a crisis for your entity. Please, on behalf of me and the people who have to work with you, get some rest. Take a vacation. Build in half days, okay? Uh, we need you. We need you healthy. We need you happy. Number four, founder dependence. What? That means that you are a solopreneur and you are responsible for all the decisions in the business. And you are the first person to make the, the excuse me, to make the suggestion. You're the last person to give it the okay. Here's the thing. As your business grows, you have to start to invest in talent. You have to trust that talent so that you can take a step back. Because, as we discussed, work stoppage is the one thing that most entrepreneurs are um, afraid of. We, hey, thanks for joining me. Um, you will continue to be upset. If your business relies solely on your expertise, you should be aligning yourself with a great community of folks who you can learn from. But more importantly, your team, more and more every day, should learn about what makes the business viable and what makes the business thrive so that it can continue to do that. But it is a weakness in your business if you are the only way your business makes money. Again, it is a weakness. It is a challenge. It, it can become a crisis level if you are what is the determining factor whether or not your business is successful. The business should have assets. Those assets are all the different products and services that you offer, but they should not all be one-on-one -on -one in person excuse me, in-person services because it, it puts the business at a dis, dis ugh, what's wrong with me? It puts the um excuse me. It puts the business at a disadvantage because it all lies on you. So if you need a vacation, if you get tired, you want a break, you have bereavement time, and you have not allowed anyone um, to help you build a community, if you do not have people in your circle who can come and lend their expertise while you're in your absence or in your presence, what ends up happening is your business will suffer. It is a crisis to be a solopreneur any minute past what you need to do. And how you back some of that off is you hire a virtual assistant. You hire a sales assistant. As you grow, you should be always thinking about how do I build my team? How do I make it so that what happens in this business doesn't always have to happen through me? It is a failure to decide that you're going to be the only person who is responsible for your business. You should not have to make all the decisions. You should not have to do all the work. In the beginning, it is a hustle, right? You are all of those things. But as you evolve, as you start to make money, as things start to turn in the right direction, you have got to get some more folks who you trust to make decisions in your business. Because if you do not, founder dependent, excuse me, founder dependence will cripple your business and it will fail. The reason why so many businesses fail in the first year, honestly, it has a lot to do. Hey, good evening. Thanks for joining me. It's because of founder dependence. You have got to release the responsibility of the business to other folks so that it is a team doing the work, creating the effort and generating the revenue. I don't know how to put it any more plainly other than that you cannot do it alone and by golly, you should stop trying. If you have been in business for more than two years and you don't have at least, hey Ashley, um, how you doing? Tell me, are you a new business owner? What kind of business do you own? How you doing this evening? Um, if you are the only person in your business and you've been in business for say two years, three years, one, are you making money? If you are, why aren't you sharing the wealth? Why aren't you sharing the responsibility? I promise you, hiring more people to help run your business will get you more revenue because you are not expending your creative equity doing things like the books, doing things like coming up with 15 and 16 different posts a week. If you can get those kind of things off your plate, you can just be excellent. You can literally turn yourself from being self-employed to being a business owner to eventually being a business investor because you will have a team of experts who work with you and collaborate with you so that you are not doing it all alone. So that instead of you being able to absorb four contracts a month, maybe you can do 20. Maybe you can do 30. Maybe you can offer different service levels. None of that can happen effectively if you are reliant on founder dependence. I cannot stress enough that founder dependence can cripple 
your business. It happens. Most businesses don't make it past 10 years. Think about it, especially in this culture. How many folks keep a job for 10 years? Better state it. How many people keep the exact same job, the exact same role for 10 years in today's world? Not very many. Especially not millennials and Generation Z. None of us. I don't know. None of my friends have had a job more than five years. I mean, they, they elevate, right? But like no one has kept the exact same role for more than five years. So if you think that being a solopreneur and being the only person who is basically the wheel, the engine, the doors, the windows, the windshields of the business is going to equal success and wealth, it's not. It's not. You need to take a break. You need a team. You have to reassess. And I really, really, really want you to dig deep. And as you're planning out who I want to be in 2021 to my business, because y'all are not the same. So you need to have your own personal goals and you need to have your own business goals. Please, in there, talk about how you want to build out your team and set benchmarks for your business to have that team. And if you haven't thought about it in a long time, how do you incentivize your current team to do more? Or how do you split their current roles into two so that you can have more help? I cannot stress enough that if you are not sharing the work that it is inevitable that there will be a work stoppage and that also means that you will probably start to lose revenue because you can't do anything other than everything if you are the only person in the business okay and then the last one and this is the, this is tricky um balancing the quality of what you offer against your growth right i know you're like what it is let, let me tell you stay with me right so it's time to scale up. You have 25 clients and you found a path to having 50 clients, right? So you hurry up and you throw some stuff out there on social media. You're all over the place. You're on Instagram, you're on LinkedIn, you're on Twitter, you're on Clubhouse, you're everywhere. And you're spreading out the word, right? The response is overwhelming and then it happens. You get 100, 200 clients and you do not know how to absorb all those folks. So... If you have physical products, you are shipping out things six weeks after the order is placed and people are on Instagram and they're big mad and they're talking about how awful it is to do business with you, right? So all that growth and wonderful that you've just experienced from the hard work that you've done by yourself, right? Um, it backfires because you can't absorb the work, right? Because you don't have any sort of balance. Sometimes it's okay to say like, hey, I only want to grow to this point. You got to get very honest, right? I talked about this the other day. How much work can you afford to do without, right? Is it 50%? Is it 60%? You need to be very clear in that same vein. How much do you want to grow? Why do so many people not plan for their growth? You want more money, right? You want to roll out more product, but you don't, you don't talk about how that growth is going to happen. You need a growth plan, right? You need benchmarks that you set for yourself based on you know, the research that you've done so that you can anticipate for it. Because what ends up happening is you sacrifice the quality, right? Because you rush people off the phone. You got a bunch of typos. You post what should be on Twitter, on LinkedIn. And then you, you forget to put the link for your event, you know, on the post. So you tell people you have an event, they can't access it. Or you don't set up the merchant for your event because you're so busy and so tired. You just want to hurry up and put it up on Eventbrite so you can go to bed, right? All these simple mistakes happen because you cannot figure out the balance between quality and growth the quality of your work diminishes and it negatively impacts your growth right at all times you should be quality focused not quality obsessed quality focused how do i give people the best quality right in my opinion doing the best work but not sacrificing the amount of time i put in so for me i can push out a carousel in about 45 minutes door to door that's me picking the format up to me creating the caption and then posting it right um i know that as i grow i'm not going to be able to do that and so the trade-off is i create a weekly content calendar and i give it to a, my virtual assistant and then she creates it and then i'm done with it right so that if I am growing, when I am growing, and I am growing, uh, if you just got here, we're having our very first business builder event on December 29th from 12 to 1.30 Central Standard Time. Um, so that means for the next two weeks, I'm going to be all in. This is our first live event for Ticket to Freedom, okay? I know I go live every day, but this is our first event. That means I'm going to be a screen sharing, homework assigning, 
cheerleading soul, getting these people together to help them start their business and jumpstart 2021, okay? Claiming your financial freedom is the thing. We're going to dig in deep, and I'm going to make believers out of all these wonderful people who have been sitting on these million-dollar ideas who are ready to be successful and wealthy, okay? I wouldn't be able to do that, though, if I hadn't figured out, A, how to manage my time really well, but B, how to create balance for myself between doing what I do really well and my growth. I build in growth exercises every week. What does that mean? That means that I look at different types of technology. That means I have conversations with vendors about, well, I'm right here. If I move to right there, what does that look like? Like, why is that important? When should I, when should I decide that I should go from the normal LinkedIn to LinkedIn premium, right? So I get online and I research how that would impact my business. How does that impact me as a person? You know, I build in these exercises now so that as I'm growing, I can absorb because I already know, okay, I need to get LinkedIn premium because X, Y, Z, or I need to upgrade my, excuse me, upgrade my convert kit because of X, Y, Z. I anticipate growth and I understand where that growth would probably happen for me first. So I just build it in. I already have my merchant account set up across platforms so that as I am generating interest, all I have to do is build around that and not have to worry about, oh my God, do I have a LinkedIn? How do I get on LinkedIn? How do I invite people to events? And so on and so forth. I'm using that as an example to show you that like, you do have to sacrifice when you scale. But I know that quarter one, 2021, I got some big things popping, okay? And I know that I'm not gonna have as much free time as I do right now, not that I have a whole lot, but the free time that I do have will be so limited because we are going to grow magnificently and flourish. And because I'm planning for it, I already know that I gotta take the time now and look it up and research it now because that time will not exist for me January, February, March, April, May, and probably June of next year. Realistically, it's not. The price is going up, the value is going up, right? The business is growing up and all of that can only happen if I'm very clear about how much growth I'm willing to absorb, okay? Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope you take to heart these five things that are challenges for businesses and you really take a hard look at these areas in your business and you see, you know, what do I need to improve on? How do I stop these things from becoming crisis level? How do I manage these things? And most importantly, with these improvements, will they positively impact my growth? And if not, how do I make sure that they do? Um, I'm always available via DM. Hit me up. Let me know what you want to talk about. Feel free if you ever have a question. You can always go live with me. I love talking to people. It's my favorite pastime. Um, again, I'm Chanel Rose. I'm owner of CR Agency. Thank you for spending this evening with me this wonderful Tuesday in December. Take care. Bye.